Hi guys, Cody here. Just wanted to make a short video to show you how to implement this on your website. So pretty much this typewriter effect. It's very easy to implement. You can probably do it in less than 10 minutes. So actually using a jQuery plugin called typed.js. Um, it's a very well maintained project. It's one of my favorites. So this is the GitHub page. Let me see if I can get to the London page. There we go. It's well documented. The installation is pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and start with the installation. Pretty much you just need about six lines of JavaScript and that's about it. You can get it going. So let's start by creating a simple uh, HTML file. I'm going to create a new folder. I'll call it typed demo. And my text editor and a new file we'll call it index.html okay let's create a new file this will be our js file i'll call it js.js nice okay so i'm just going to use bootstrap to come up with the simple HTML design so that we can get started. So I'll just copy the starter template, paste it in there. Let's see how that looks now. Okay, good, there we go. Okay. Let me add some more functionality so that this looks realistic. I'll just add this box to our HTML document. Replace the H1 tags with it. Okay, there we go. So we can work with this uh, pretty simple template. So let's start with the installation. I'll go ahead and close this. So first, you can see they actually link the JS file type.js. So in order to do that, we need to download it. So I'm going to go ahead and download the zip right here, type.js, and unzip that. Okay, so that's it right here, unzipped. What I'm actually looking for is this type.js. So I'm going to move that into a project folder. So we have type.js, js.js, and our index file. Okay, good. So now we actually have to link that to our index document. So that's where this comes in. I'm going to copy this and paste it after these tags over here. Okay, there we have it. Now I'm actually going to link the JS file we created too. So js.js. Good, there we have it. Okay, so now let's look at the actual plugin. It's pretty simple. It's just saying when the contents of the DOM are loaded, run this function, right? And so the function pretty much contains strings, the first sentence and the second sentence. So it will display the first sentence backspace it and then display the second sentence and then this is the type speed pretty much how fast you want it to work so as you can see it displays first sentence backspaces it display second sentence so let's go ahead and implement that i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste it in a js file what did i do copy paste well, since this is a JS file, we actually don't need these script tags. So I will go ahead and remove them. Now, you can see there's a div over here with a class of element. Now, if you look at the, the content of this JS file, you can see that it looks for a div with, an L, with a class of element before it can actually run what's in the strings. So it doesn't have to be element specifically, it can be any name, but you need to include the div where the strings are actually going to be inserted. So I'm actually going to copy this div 
and I will paste it let's say right below the text over here let's do that save now let's see what it looks like as you can see that's it over there refresh backspace you have that awesome okay now there are a few things that you might have noticed one it's not blinking uh, as this is in order to do that you need to include these the styling so I'm going to copy that I'm not going to create a separate style sheet for that I'm just going to put it right in here in the HTML document Now you can see it's actually blinking. When we're done, we can get it on the line, but that's just a minor styling change. Okay, so what if you don't actually want to do this? You don't want to have your text inside your JS document. This is fairly easy to add, but maybe this might not be ideal. So let's, let's look at that. And obviously, if you want to change the speed, you can do that over here. Um, I actually don't know if it allows for S, maybe not. Okay. Let's see. Okay, you can see the speed changes. So let's get back to this. Let's go to the GitHub project and let's look at some options. So this is what we looked at when you add in strings to it. Now, if you don't want to add the strings in the GS file, you can pretty much create a div like we have over here, give it the ID of tagged strings. And then whatever content you have in the ID, so far as you have it in the paragraph element, it's actually going to run too. So let's do that. I'm going to copy this and paste it somewhere. I'm going to paste it somewhere here. Let me comment it out so that it's, it's clear. So, okay, got that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this element over here. We don't need it anymore. So now this is what we're looking for. So I'm going to copy this text. As you may, we say this is the first part of a text. I'm going to paste it into the first paragraph element. And then the second section, I'll paste it right here. Good. Now, it needs to be in the paragraph tag for it to work. The ID can be anything, but it just has to match what you have in the uh, JS document. So now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'll comment this out instead of... Uh, Getting rid of it. Okay. So pretty much this is saying the same thing. When the contents of the DOM of loaded run this function, it's looking for um, a div with the ID of type, uh, which we have right here. Span element, but whatever. And in order for the strings element to run, it's looking for the element with the ID of typed strings. Okay. So we have that set. Now let's see how that looks. Perfect, there we go. See, it types it out, backspace it, and it types it out again. Perfect, seems to be working well. Now, that's not the only thing. You can add a lot of customization, so line breaks just by inserting the break tag. You can add pausing, so put that right in front of it, and it comes with a ton of customizations that you can actually add to it. So you can set the type speed, which um, we had in the first one right here. So can include that, and put that back here. And forget to put a comma. And then that can set the, the type speed. Let's change that to 10. Slows it down. 
that's not all. You can actually do a delay, buck delay. So it will take some time before it starts to buck space whatever text you have. I'm going to add that. Let's see. Types it out. Waits for a bit and it goes. Let's try to increase that to make sure it works. Okay, so the delay, and then that's it. You can add a loop to it. There's so many other options you can actually add to it. And of course, you can actually add a callback function, which is actually my favorite part. And so after this runs, you might want you to do something else. It's, it's, it's actually pretty awesome. I haven't really tried that, but maybe let's see. Let's, let's play around with that and see if that works. Uh, maybe for a function that we just want to put in an alert. So let's try and see if that works. There we go. And then now that pops up hello world after I finish finishes running it executes whatever we have uh, in the function over here. So your function can be as long as whatever it is. And I'm pretty sure you can have callback functions within your callback function. So that's pretty awesome. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.